My brother recently bought a 1956 Buick that he's restoring. And in this process, he's encountered a lot of problems with rust. Rust creates lots of issues with metal surfaces that can create irreversible damage. So you want to deal with that as soon as possible. There are lots of commercial products and processes on the market that you can use, but we don't know which one is best for restoring this vehicle. So I will be conducting a series of tests to determine what process or product is best at removing rust. I will be testing Rust Check Rust Converter, POR15 Metal Prep, CLR, Evaporust, and Electrolysis. In order to test the effectiveness of each product or process, I will be taking the lug nuts off the wheels and measuring the amount of mass removed by each process. I will also look at a visual comparison of before and after. To start, here's my initial setup with 24 hours to 96 hours along the side and each column is a different process or product. I have a precise scale that I'm using to measure and record the mass of each bolt before starting the experiment. Each jar in a column will have an equal portion of its corresponding rust removal product in it and will remain associated with its square in the grid throughout the entire experiment. I also took detailed individual pictures of each bolt for before and after visual comparison. This rust check rust converter product was the smallest bottle by volume, so I divided it evenly into four small plastic cups. Well, luckily this came out to one of the existing lines on the cups. We will use this line to measure the volume of all of our other products. Here you see me pouring the measured amount into the four rust check jars. Rust check is composed of tannic acid that removes the rust, and a polymer that provides a protective layer. Next, we move on to the POR15 metal prep. For each new product, I use a new measuring cup as it is very important not to mix different chemicals. You can see that we measured to the same line on the cup again to achieve a consistent amount of product in each test jar. POR15 is made out of phosphoric acid deionized water, and zinc phosphate. It is an acidic product that removes rust and leaves behind a zinc coating to prevent new rust. Some of these chemicals are corrosive, so I am taking precautions by wearing latex gloves and pouring slowly and carefully. Next up is CLR or calcium lime rust. I label each cup to ensure I don't accidentally use it for a different product. CLR uses acids to break down the rust that can then wash off in the solution. It contains lactic acid, gluconic acid, loramine oxide, propylene glycol, and other solvents. Our final commercial product is Evaporust. Evaporust is a pH neutral solution that uses a process called chelation to remove rust from metals. Chelation uses an agent that binds to the iron oxide ions and makes them water soluble so that the rust comes off into the solution. Based on my initial research, my hypothesis is that evaporust will perform best. Our final rust removal technique is a process, not a product. We are going to perform electrolysis. To set up for electrolysis, we need to attach a wire to each bolt so that we can dangle the bolts into a sodium carbonate solution. The wires will then be attached to the negative terminal of a 12 volt 5 amp battery charger. I am labeling each bolt with the date that it will be removed from the electrolysis bath. Electrolysis passes direct current through a dissolved ionic solution. This produces chemical reactions at the electrodes pulling rust off the negatively connected electrode and depositing it at the sacrificial positive electrode. This process creates hydrogen gas, so we will be taking these bolts out to my back deck to do the electrolysis in a more ventilated area. 
I'm tying all of these bolts together to make them more convenient to attach to the battery charger. We are finally ready to begin our experiment. Each pre-weighed bolt is placed in its associated jar. I am being careful to ensure that the bolts are lying down and entirely covered by the rust removal solutions. They will remain in the jars for one, two, three, or four days before being removed. As you can see, I am having to dip my fingers into the solution in the jars in order to get the bolts to lie down and be submerged. Therefore, I change my gloves between placing the bolts in each different type of rust removal solution. Oh, that one's bubbling right away. Now it's time to get the final set of bolts into the electrolysis bath. I am securely connecting the negative lead from the battery charger to the set of rusty bolts. Then I place a steel bar into the sodium carbonate bath as a sacrificial electrode. And I attach the positive lead from the battery charger to this steel bar. Next, the bolts go into the bath. And finally, we plug in the battery charger and wait. A side note, our sodium carbonate is also known as Arm & Hammer washing soda. It has now been 24 hours since the bolts went into their rust removal solutions, so we are removing the first set of bolts. We have to rinse off the rust removal solution, so first I dip the bolts in a jar of clean water. Then I use a brush to remove any loose rust that the rust removal solution has dislodged from the bolt. I am brushing each side of the bolt head seven times in order to control the amount of brushing and keep it consistent from bolt to bolt. Finally, I dry the bolt to prevent it from immediately rusting again. Here we can see the before and after difference of rust check rust converter. It looks pretty good. I'm changing my gloves again between each different chemical. Next up is POR15 metal prep. Same procedure as the previous bolt. Looks like the POR15 successfully removed rust too. And we move on to the CLR rust removal solution. Same procedure, carefully repeated the same way again. CLR definitely appears to have removed some of that orange rust. After a quick glove change, evaporust is next.
The evapo-rust bolt looks pretty much like fresh new metal. No signs of rust at all, and a very nice gray color to it. Now we need to head out to the back deck to retrieve the bolt that's been in the electrolysis bath. First, we power down the battery charger, and then we find the correct bolt to remove. We will take the bolt back to the others for scrubbing and drying, but not before re-energizing the electrolysis bath. With the wire removed, the brushing commences. As I was cleaning the electrolysis bolt, I realized something was wrong. It had pretty much the same amount of rust on it as when we started, but electrolysis should work better than that. So we actually restarted the electrolysis bolt experiment with a better battery charger attached to the bolts. Here are the results after the first 24 hours of soaking. Now I will repeat this removal and cleaning process every evening for the next three days until all the bolts have completed their soak times. After the fourth day's bolts were finished, brushed, rinsed and dried, each bolt was again carefully weighed and its final mass was recorded in the grid. And here is our grid of final results. The rust check bolts in the first column are quite dark, likely because of the polymer coating that this product leaves behind on the bolts. The 72 hour bolt soaked in POR15 seems to have gone all silver and crystally. I have no idea why but it must have been contaminated somehow. Okay, so now we get to see the final results after 96 hours of each rust removal method. I'll show you the before and after pictures and share how much mass each method removed from each bolt. Here we get to see the before and after for 96 hours of rust check rust converter. This bolt lost the most mass of all the tests removing 0.91 grams. Rust Check's polymer coating left a visibly darker color on the bolt, but it is supposed to protect the bolt from further corrosion. POR15 Metal Prep removed a mass of 0.61 grams from the bolt after 96 hours, and left behind a much darker, cleaner looking bolt with most of the rust removed. POR15 leaves behind a zinc coating as a protective layer. CLR took off a similar amount of mass to that of POR15, removing 0.6 grams after 96 hours. Visually, the CLR also left the bolt a bit darker, but doesn't leave any sort of protective coating behind. The Evaporust removed significantly less mass compared to the previous products, and I think this is because it only removed the rust, whereas the other products used their acidic natures to first remove the rust and then continue to eating away at the underlying good metal. This bolt looks clean, corrosion free, and nearly as good as new. The electrolysis process proved to be a tricky one for this experiment. However, once we got it working with the correct power source, it produced a really good looking end result. The rust is definitely gone, though strangely the mass lost was very minimal at only 0.03 grams. All right, the experiment is done. Our goal was to see what product or process works best for removing rust? I have two winners, Rust Check Rust Converter and Evaporust. Rust Check won by removing the most mass from the bolt, um, but some of that mass might be good metal from the bolt. So Evaporust won for looks, it looks the best, and I believe just removed the rust from the bolt. So if I have to choose one, Evaporust is the winner, and I will be recommending Evaporust to my brother to finish fixing the rest of his car.